Hello, and welcome to another exciting edition of the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast. Neil? Yes. Take it away. (laughs) All right, every week we have a theme, and in that theme we've got six categories, and each category has four questions. Each question is worth ten points. There's a few bonus points thrown in here and there. And as you guys know, we are nearing the end of our, let's call it our summer tournament. And our standings so far are thus. We've got Kells in first place. Buenas noches. And Andy with uh, 13 points in second place. Hello. And Devo bringing up the rear with uh, 12 points in third place. I'm a tiger in the tall grass. I'm coming for you, Kells. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's scared. Yeah, man. Um, Catch Andy first. <laughs> and then we'll have a talk about it. <laughs> nice. Fair. <laughs> I have faith in you. All right. Are you guys ready to start? Absolutely. Well, we have a theme today because that's typically what we do. And today's theme, so someone suggested, um, Andy did his episode not long ago for the, uh, what was the, 1902 you you picked, Andy? Yes. I decided that, I kind of like that, it's it's actually kind of easy to do an episode for a particular year. So I decided to add 50, and we're at 1952 today. So all of our questions relate in some way to 1952. Okay. This is going to be brutal. No. no awesome. Okay. It's going to be great. So that put you at about uh, 14, Andy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's that's That sounds about right, Dave. Thanks. I'm 112 years old. <laughs> Tale is old as time. <laughs> so besides science, besides science, you're not that great at math either, apparently. No. (laughs) Well, we have one more piece of housekeeping to do before we can get started with the questions. For this tournament, as you know, we're doing a bonus round. And I have invented a piece of technology here that I use to indicate our bonus round where the questions are going to be worth 50% more. So let me figure out which category is going to be our bonus round this time. Ah. All right. It has been noted. We'll get to it when we get to it. Category one, 1952. For some reason, at the top of my document, I write I wrote 1956. I don't know why. So if I ever say 1956, then just uh, know that I actually meant to say 1952. Got it. Category one is births. These are all people that were born in 1952. Question one. The perjury of this L.A. cop, born on February 5th, 1952, may be one reason that O.J. was acquitted. Locked in. Oh. So there was a trial. Oh, I remember him. Remember O.J. had a trial? Yeah. 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 Do I have to have the whole name? As always, when it comes to names, if you give me the last name, that's usually sufficient. Okay. If you give me the first name and it's not the right first name, then the answer is wrong. Ooh. Pressure. Under pressure. <laughs> this guy was an... Oh, man. Uh, I'm locking in with the wrong answer. Because I can I think I have his first name, but if I just said Officer Joe, it wouldn't work. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah. Because that's Joe Friday. Yes. Uh, and he, and a he's a good cop. Altogether. He's a good cop. Wasn't he a detective? Sure. He was. Sergeant Joe Friday. Oh, uh, yeah. You put some respect on his name. Then. Is everybody locked in? I don't know if yeah. Andy has. I locked right. in a long time ago. Okay. Kells, what's your answer? Uh, Mark Furman. Diva? Officer Surf and Turf. <laughs> And Andy. Officer Surf and Turf was six weeks from retirement, man. He had a boat. Um, I couldn't remember his first name, uh, but I remembered his last name, Furman. 
correct answer is Mark Furman. This is why I am just stalking in the tall grass and not actually out of the grass. <laughs> it's the first question. I know. Easy there, Tiger. <laughs> I was I was just mentioning some of the other attributes that Mark Furman has because uh, this is a family show. Mm. But it's likely he wasn't a very nice man. Fair to say. Word on the street would back that up. I got my ear on the street, man. You're checking the pulse of what's going down, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Question two. Both of the singers of the 1985 hit Ya Mo Be There were born in February of 1952. Name either singer or both for a bonus. You familiar with Ya Mo Be There? Nope. No. no. Say that again. Ya, Y-A, M-O, B-E, there. Ya Mo Be There. I believe it's, it's not good least- English. No, it's not. I believe it's a. It's it's supposed to sound something like "Yes, I'm going to be there." Well, why wouldn't you just say "Yes, I'm going to be there"? I don't know. Maybe that's that's proper maybe English. That's um, this is wrong, but I'm a I'm a lock in anyway. No idea. And it's two people. It is a duet. The duet. Huh. In 1985? Uh, sorry, that should be 1983. My mistake. 83. Duet. It's it's on the album of one of the singers, but the other singer is singing on the song. You know how sometimes singers sing yep, on other yep, people's yep, albums? Yep, yep. That's kind of what's going on here. Okay. Peaked at number nine. Number 19 on the U.S. charts. Number 19 on the U.S. charts. Yeah, Andy, you probably did the Charleston in this. I I am going with a show favorite. (laughs) For my answer, I'm locked in. All right, Deva? I'm locked in. Okay, what's your answer? Uh, Michael Jackson and Donna Summer. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Summer was the last episode you know that, right? Dang it. Andy? I'm going with Peaches and Herb, a classic favorite of the Brain Ladle cast. We do like a, a bit of Peach and Herb. We do. Kells, do you know the answer? I'm um, hoping that before they became a true tandem that Vanilli joined up with Millie <laughs> on his album. <laughs> and they did this. So I went with Millie Vanilli. Well, I don't think it surprises you that none of you are correct. Oh. <laughs> hmm. the The album, the song was on an album called uh, "It's Your Night" by Mr. James Ingram, and the co singer was Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald, <laughs> Davo's favorite artist. I was listening to this song and I realized I really, really, really dislike Michael McDonald's voice. <laughs> There's nothing wrong Whereas, with the way he sings. Bye, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> too. Yeah, I'm going to be there. <laughs> now I can hear him singing it. I yeah, now, it now. now it makes sense. Utter now sense it makes now. sense. The song was referenced in the 2005 film The 40 Year Old Virgin. A uh, salesman oh, yeah. played by Paul Rudd said something like, Nothing against Michael McDonald, but if I hear Yamo be there one more time, I'm going to Yamo burn this place to the ground. <laughs> I remember that part now. <laughs> All right. Question two was a sweep. It was this a sweep on sweep. you. <laughs> That's going to stick around for the whole show, Neil. Just so oh, you know. Yeah. Man, I should have done music last. Or I should have done <laughs> but th- this is the birth category. That's so the birth I category. First. I had to do it first. <laughs> Speaking of births, Lawrence Turode was born in May, and he was a bouncer and bodyguard before becoming an actor. By what name is he better known? I'm locking in. It's <laughs> L-A-U-R-E-N-C-E. T-U-R-E-A-U-D. I'm locked in as well. I'll keep the Michael McDonald to a minimum. 
No. No, don't deny our listeners. <laughs> Would you like an Andy? I'm still thinking I've got it down between two people. Nope, 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 nope. I'm done. I got this. Wow, I almost went the wrong way with this. Andy, what's your answer? Mr. T. Kels? Ah, uh, Mr. T. <laughs> Best cartoon ever. Devo. Mr. T. It is Mr. T. So I read that he, he basically grew up hearing his father and uncles and other other uh, males in his acquaintance being called son and boy and stuff like that. And he vowed that people were going to treat him with respect. So he started re- insisting that people call him Mr. And so that's how Mr. T came about. I think it also helped Rocky with the respect three. that he had arms the size of tree trunks. Yeah, he had, he was a boxer for a while and um, he just demolished people. I mean, I mean he was he, heavyweight champion. Right. He almost beat Rocky. I mean, well, even before the fictional movies that you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Question four. This British author and screenwriter who brought us classic movies such as Hellraiser, Candyman, and The Midnight Meat Train was born in October. Wait a minute. The Midnight Meat Train? Yes. It's a great movie. It's really good. I'm locked in. I Bradley have, Cooper, I think. I've never <laughs> heard of that movie, but I kind of want to see it now. I, I can tell you it's about a train full of meat that runs at midnight. <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up. I'm locked in. I'm going to lock in. Kels? I put the wrong answer in what with Candyman himself, Tony Todd. Hmm. Andy? Clive Barker? Devo. Clive Barker. The correct answer is Clive Barker. And and the candy man is Sammy Davis Jr. Let's be clear. Uh, the candy man is Willy candy Wonka. Man. <laughs> At the end of round one, Andy has 30. Devo and Kells are tied with 20. Mm-hmm. We're going to move on to category two, which is sports. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. What do you know about your 1952 sports? Woo! Well, mm. probably a lot of players Dave I wish dead. <laughs> yeah, probably in their prime in the 50s. Dave <laughs> Well, well <laughs> what has he done for me lately, Mickey Mantle? <laughs> All right, question one. In Game 7 of the 1952 World Series, this player hit the first of his record 18 World Series home runs. Ooh. Let's see. I can eliminate any Cubs players. Yes, you can. (laughs) I was going to tell you the team, but I thought that might be too easy. I'm locked in. Me too. Locked in. Yeah, why not? I'm going to lock in. David? What have you done for me lately, Mickey Mantle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice, Andy. Andy. How would I know? <laughs> Andy? Yeah, it's Mickey Mantle. And Kells. I also went with number seven from the Yankees. Mickey Mantle. The correct answer is Mickey Mantle. Question two. This one has a uh, an easy mode if you need it. I don't know that you will. This NBA team beat the Celtics in the NBA Finals in 1952 to win their third championship. I need the pass. easier one. Locked in. Okay. Kells is locked in. Andy passing. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Makes sense. I'm locking in. Okay. So for the benefit of Andy, for half points... I'll go on to tell you that they went on to appear in a record 31 NBA Finals and have won 16. Locked in. Okay. Andy. I think it's the Lakers. Kels? The Minneapolis Lakers. Dave uh, The Lakers. The correct answer is the Lakers. Minneapolis at the time, and obviously they moved to L.A. at some point. Los Angeles. I think they won... Five three in Minneapolis. Yeah. I think they won three of the first four, too. 
Yeah, they were like the first early, uh, or like the first dynasty. The Mikan era? Yeah. Question three. This boxer with a career record of 173 to 19 to 6 had had his only loss by TKO at the hands of Joey Maximum in June. So he lost 18 times, but he, he lost 19 times, but um, only one of them was by TKO. The rest were by decisions. Locked in. I'm locked in as well. Locked in. Kels? I guess Joe Lewis. David? Floyd Patterson? Andy? I went with Frazier. Correct answer was none of those. It was Sugar <laughs> Ray Robinson. Sure. Ah. Joe Frazier is 152 years old. So there was a there was a heat wave. They were playing, I think, at uh, Yankee Stadium, and there was a massive heat wave. At one point, the the referee uh, collapsed onto the ropes. There were a couple mm. of dozen spectators that had to have medical attention, and um, so Sugar Ray wasn't handling the heat as well as his opponent was. He lasted like. 12 rounds or something like that. Good lord. Out. Pound for pound. Sure, he robs the greatest fight I ever live. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe you should have answered him. I should have. I, was, I didn't think he lost that much, though. But he did fight for a long time. Yeah, he did. Okay, this uh, final question in sports also has an easy mode. The question is, both the Summer and Winter Olympics were held in capital cities about 500 miles away from each other. Which cities hosted them? So the 1952 Olympics. How many miles apart, did you say? Right about 500. You know, there's multiple venues, so it's you know different, but those two cities are approximately 500 miles. Pass. No, oh, the easy one, yeah. I'm not coming up with it. I'm going to lock in. Okay. Kells, go big or go home, man. Man, might as well. Okay, the easy mode is Mm -hmm. both of these are Nordic countries. That's the easy mode? Uh (laughs) (sighs) Both are Nordic and one had the summer. And I do need to know which was which, too. Oh, fine, sure. Oh, okay. Um... Just in my thought process, I figured both of them would be, but both of them. No, would be one, one was summer and one was winter. Yeah, um, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Okay, let's start with Kells. I said, uh, Os- "Oslo in Helsinki." And I said, "Oslo was the." Summer games in Helsinki was the winter. David? Dang it. I said Stockholm for the summer and Ooh. Helsinki for the winter. That's a good one. Andy? I said Helsinki for the summer and Shermer for the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Told you it was real. <laughs> Turns out it's in Norway. Yeah. <laughs> well... There were various degrees of correctness there. I know Shermer's right um, on the money. I had intended this to be an all or nothing. And if it's an all or nothing, then nobody scored. Kells, hmm. you had him flipped. Oh. Helsinki had the Summer Olympics in Norway. Or Oslo had the Winter Olympics. Dang it. it. Looking at the map, it looks like Helsinki's actually a little bit further north than Oslo. I didn't actually look at their latitudes, but all right. At the end of round two, Andy has 45. David and Kells are tied with 40. Anybody's game. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to music. Ooh, I like music. Good (laughs) block. You listen to music, Davo. Yeah, but not from 1952. (laughs) I tried to make it easier. I mean, it, some of the I was looking at like the top songs in 1952, and I never heard of most of them. <laughs> Not that that means anything, but I, it was hard. <laughs> I'm 
and I, got, I have a double album jukebox hits of 1952 in my collection. So bring it. Oh my mm. gosh. Well, I'm hoping I got some, some questions here that aren't on that album, but this first one, you're probably going to know anyway. In 1952, this Memphis record label was founded. It was the first to record Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis, Roy Orbison, among many others. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Andy? Sun Records. Kels? Oh, man. I said Stax. Stax is Chicago. Devo? I, I said Sun Records. Your answer is Sun Records. I don't know why I put that in. What city did you say? I believe first. Stax is out of Chicago. The question said it's a Memphis record label. Stax started in Memphis. Did it? Why is I? Why was I thinking that was a Chicago label? Hmm. Maybe they, you know, um, I don't know, migrated or. Hmm. Yeah, let's look it up here. But it probably came later anyway, though. Not that yeah. I think about it. it was originally based in Memphis, founded in 1957 as Satellite Records, changed its name to Stax in '61, and. No, you're right. It's apparently Memphis. still still in Memphis. Yeah. My bad. But on they that. were not the first to record Elvis. Question two. This Christmas song by Jimmy Boyd hit number one on the pop charts in December. It was later covered by everybody from the Ronettes to the Jackson 5 to Amy Winehouse. I do have an easy mode for this question also. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Ah, hell. <laughs> I'll take the easy mode, please. The easy mode is there was also a gender bending version by RuPaul. I did not know about that version. That's new. But I'm intrigued. Mm, that doesn't make it easier at all. <laughs> uh, it will when you hear the answer, probably. Okay. I am locking in. Kels? I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. Devo? I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. But when you said gender bending, I wrote down, I saw daddy kissing Santa Claus. <laughs> That's the title of the RuPaul version. Yeah. <laughs> Andy? I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. That is the correct answer. Question three. Bird and Diz was the name of a 1952 album released by which two artists? Locked in. Locked in. I'm locked in. David? Uh, Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. Andy? Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. And Kells. Parker and Gillespie. That is correct. The only reason I got that is because you guys gave me such grief about missing a Charlie Parker question earlier in this show. <laughs> <laughs> so what, you read his biography or? No, I remembered his nickname was Bird. Oh, okay. Yard Bird. He was a uh, principal musician at Birdland. I remember that question a while back. <laughs> in 1952, John Cage composed a song in three movements called Four Minutes and 33 Seconds. What is unusual about this song? Locked in. Yeah, I'm locked in. Locked in. Andy? Uh, since it's a Cage song, two men enter, one man leaves. <laughs> Kels I said that it is not actually 4 minutes and 33 seconds long <laughs> uh, and Deva well if I remember correctly he would, he would open up the, the lid of the piano and sit in silence and the noise that the crowd would make or the, no the ambient noises around him would form the composition so there's actually no music in it. And he got paid? The correct answer is essentially that it is four minutes and 33 seconds of silence. The musicians are instructed not to play. You, you could play this, this, uh, this piece with a full orchestra. Um, any, any arrangement would work because there's no playing. notes on the page. <laughs> wow. Turns out I can play the piano. You, we all can play he, he was trying to be provocative, obviously, and try to get people to consider what music is and 
uh, you know, a lot of music has rests in it, has to have silence in it. And so he was just take, kind of taking that to an extreme. And some people got really irritated with him for doing it. Yeah, I'm irritated but I don't now. Think he cared much. <laughs> At the end of round three, Devo and Andy are tied with 75, and Kells has 60. Wow. As usual, Andy did pretty good in music. Devo did even better in music category today. Woohoo! By my math, Devo, you're catching up. Yep. I like that math. Mm hmm. However, the next category is movies. Uh, dun dun dun. Bollocks. I don't know if you know this, but Kells is usually pretty good at the movies. Probably has all the 1952 movies on his couch right now, ready to watch. <laughs> no, nah, just that one from 34. <laughs> I love that one, by the way. Did you ever watch it? No, I still haven't watched it. Yeah. Question one. This circus epic was the highest grossing movie of 1952. Oh, 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 oh. Locked in. Oh, I feel this is Trixie. I'll put something in parentheses next to my answer that I locked in with. I'm locked in. Kells, what's your answer? I said the the greatest show on earth. Andy? I only know this because it has an epic train wreck scene in the film. Uh, the greatest show on earth. And Devo. I put Big Top. I was wrong. You were wrong. It was Best Picture Oscar winner, Greatest Show on Earth. Question two. This Academy Award winning Gary Cooper Western was intended to be an allegory for the Red Scare blacklist. Locked in. Locked in. I only know like a few Gary Cooper movies. I'm going to go with the one that I thought of first. It doesn't sound like it would work in this situation, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm locked in. Andy? High noon. What? Yeah. There you go. High noon. And Kels. Well, High Noon was the only movie I can think of, but... <laughs> well, the correct answer is High Noon. Whoop, yeah, whoop. I don't really know. I've never seen it, so I don't really know how it's an allegory for the Red Scare blacklist. But I do know that the rumor is John Wayne hated the movie and actually turned down the Gary Cooper part because he was a big fan of the House on American Activities Commission committee. He was. Yeah, John he Wayne was, was yeah. yeah, kind of a jerk. But the, the director of that movie was uh, an alleged communist. Question three. This musical had moderate success when released in 1952, but has since come to be considered one of the best musicals of all time. I have kind of a half-hearted easy mode on this one if you if you need it. I don't know how much it'll help. Locked in. I'm stuck between two. Let me go with the safer answer. Yeah. Are you torn between two lovers? <laughs> in like a I'm locked in. Andy? Singing in the rain. There you go. Singing in the rain. And Kells. Just singing in the rain. It is singing in the rain. Question four. The movie Buana Devil was the first color feature film using this technology. Color feature film. I'm locked in. You seem proud of yourself. I think it's an interesting guess. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Devo? I think it was the first 3D movie. Kels? I said Technicolor. I had no idea. Andy? I, too, had no idea and wrote down Technicolor. It was the first color 3D movie. Yeah! No. <laughs> nice. Davo's out for blood. Yeah. He's not jokes. He's just sitting there quietly, rattling off the right answer. I'm telling you. <laughs> this is a creepy new side of Davo. <laughs> well at the end of round four everybody scored 30 points so the scores haven't changed much it's 105 for Devo and Andy and 90 for Kells that brings us to today's bonus question I feel like we should have a bell or something when we have the bonus round that might be really annoying though too I don't know 
But this category, category, category five, is science. Mother, mother of pearl. No. Love science. It's the bonus round, too. Ooh. Uh, so your questions are worth 15 points each. Okay. Otherwise known as the round that Kells comes up and steps on my throat. Right. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but <laughs> kind of losing. You're better at science than me. Yeah, you read books, Kells. Question one. Anesthesiologist Virginia Apgar developed a method of determining the health of what? See, there you go. <laughs> Anesthesiologist. What is her name? I'm locked in. Really? Virginia Virginia yeah. Apgar. Virginia Apgar. A-P-G-A-R. It, it's, it's kind of appropriate. All right, I'm locked in. Mm, locked in. Devo. Newborn babies. Kels. Also said newborns. Andy. I had nothing. So I was going to say anesthesiologist, maybe using gas. So maybe she figured out something about how to judge the health of lungs. The correct answer is she developed a method of scoring the health of newborn babies. Hmm. It's a 10 point scale that relates to the appearance like the color of the skin the pulse the um, face reflexes activity and respiration so a score of seven to ten is great a score of three to or less means there's serious problems all right so far doing pretty good on the on the science give it time question two yeah (laughs) question two Christine Jorgensen was one of the first people to have this kind of surgery in 1952 in Copenhagen. Locked in. Locked in. No, that's, that can't be right. Seems like that would be much earlier. Did y'all just know this? Yep. Yeah. Oh, what the hey? No, it's not right, but I'm rolling with it. Locked in. Kels? I just said open heart surgery. Andy? I believe the politically correct way of saying it now is sex reassignment surgery. It used to be called sex change. Dave, hmm. Gender reassignment surgery. Oh, that's probably even more politically correct. No, I think sex is actually um, more it's, accurate. It's, it's more accurate, but sex change gender operation. gender generally has gender generally has more to do with your preferences. I think gender is a social construct. So anyway. The correct answer is sex reassignment. She was a uh, ex-military, and when she left the uh, left the military, she decided that she needed to have this surgery, and it wasn't legal in the U.S. So she she was going to go to I think Norway, but ended up in Copenhagen and uh, stayed there for a few years while she. I think other people had had the surgeries before, but I think she was the first to combine it with hormone therapy as well. And she hmm. became a very outspoken um, transgendered rights spokesperson up and through the 80s. So was I correct? <laughs> yes. Okay. The correct answer is sex reassignment. Question three. Besides being an influ- influential punk band, Operation Ivy was the first successful test of what kind of device? The punk band doesn't really have anything to do with the question. It's just a... <laughs> I just like that Operation. band. Operation... Ivy. It sounds like a military name. And it was the first successful test of a specific device? Specific kind of device, yeah. Kind of device. I mean, they built a device and tested it, so there was a specific device, but it was also the first of its kind. Hmm. Right, right, right. Device. 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 Alright, I'm locked in. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go with this. I'm locked in. Andy? Um, it sounds like a Cold War thing. Military Cold War. Uh, all I could come up with like maybe spy satellites, but I don't think that's it. Okay. David? I was thinking along the same lines, but I went a slightly different tack. Operation Ivy. 
ivy the, the the vines kind of obscure so i was thinking like a weaponized ex, uh, uh, plant killer so something like a ddt or napalm kind of weapon nice or poison ivy nice it might have been a way to capture robin though anybody that would work really anybody do tie shoe strength yeah capture robin. super capture. why he doesn't wear shoelaces hello <laughs> Well, he learned. It only takes once, doesn't it? <laughs> once a week. <laughs> There's another pop, rock, pop pop culture reference I don't get. The boy hostage. The boy hostage. The boy hostage. Kills, what's your answer? I said nuclear bomb test. The time period kind of. That's, I was just going that route because I know they were, you know, atomic bombs and then they went nuclear at some point. I'm hoping it's 1952. The correct answer is it was the first successful test of the hydrogen or thermonuclear or fusion bomb. Nice. Oh. Up until then, they were they were fission bombs. Like the, yeah. the, the bombs we used in World War II were fission bombs. So these are the first fusion weapons. Well done, Kels. These are the ones that really hurt. It really, really. I think the first one they, they had two devices that they that they set off, and I think the first one was something like five hundred times the uh, power of the one we dropped on Hiroshima. Is it five hundred? I think it's five hundred. Yeah. All right. Question four: The barcode was patented in 1952, but it didn't really catch on until the introduction of the UPC code in 1974. What was the first product that was scanned in 1974? The first UPC code that was scanned, what product was it on? Okay, I'm on. on everybody knows this. Of course. <laughs> I'm just locking in with a really common product of the time. Me, I'm locking it, but yeah, I'm locked in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm locked in. Tiva, what's your answer? Can of soup. Kels? Well, we didn't see it until the 80s, but it had to be Maggie Simpson. That's why I didn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well played. Andy? A bottle of Coke. Oh, oh, that's another sweep. Correct answer. Oh. And I expect you guys will remember this from here on out. It was a pack of Wrigley's gum. Wow. Does it really got to hurt for you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stings a little bit. But it sure is I, trivial. They're, uh, they're based in Shermer, right? Wrigley. No. <laughs> no such thing as Shermer. At the end of round five, I've got Deva with 125 in the lead. Andy with 115 and Kells with 110. Oh, that brings us to our. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Those scores are all too low. All right, because it was the. It was a bonus. Yeah. So let me let me reiterate. Let me or not reiterate because that would be saying the same thing. Let me say something completely different than what I said before. Devo is in the lead with 135, and Kells and Andy are tied with 120. Oh boy! And that brings mm -hmm. us to round six. Anyone, anybody, want to guess what round six is on? Um, I bet this is deaths. Good one. Yeah. Deaths. Yeah. These are people who people who died in 1952. Question one: Princess Elizabeth's father died on February sixth, leading her to her leading to her coronation on the seventh. What was her father's name? His royal name. Oh dang! I was about to say. <laughs> it's, not, it's not just daddy <laughs> I'm locked in I'm locked in I'm locked in Andy King George the 6th Devo King George the 6th and Kells um, known in his um, closest circle of friends as Bertie uh, it's actually King George the 6th Correct answer is George the Sixth. This question has an easy mode. 
On October 26th, the woman who was probably the first African-American woman to sing on the radio in the U.S. passed away. Who was she? Oh, she died in 50... Locked in. I'm sorry. Yeah, October 26th. There I is need the easy mode, mode please. Hold on, I'm thinking... I said probably on that one because I couldn't find a really strong um, confirmation that it was this person. I'm locking in. I'm locked. I'm going for it. I'm locked in. All right. So for Devo, the easy mode is she was also the first African American to win an Oscar. Oh, I'm wrong, man. And I, I can see your face, I think. Um, Are you now a believer? <laughs> I am a believer. I'm going to lock in with something. All right, David. What's your answer? Oh, don't lock in with <sighs> <sighs> I do it in order. I do it in order. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I thought that the lady who was in Gone with the Wind was the first African-American to win an Oscar, so I'm probably wrong. And I put down Hattie McDonald because I couldn't think of anything worth a while. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. No disrespect. (laughs) You're you're painfully close. It's Hattie McDaniel. Oh, my God. (laughs) What did you get? Is that your answer, Kel? I said McDonald. Yeah, I, I went with Hattie McDaniel. Oh, and Andy. I locked in too early. Um, and I guess Billy Holiday, and that's wrong, wrong, wrong. Yep, the correct answer is Hattie McDaniel. Oh, man, that hurts. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. I, I feel for you. Oh, no. <laughs> that one's stinks. She has two different stars on the Walk of Fame, one for acting and one for music. And I thought this was interesting and sad. She sat at a segregated table at the Oscar ceremony that she won at the Coconut Grove restaurant because they didn't allow African-Americans in the restaurant, but they made a special favor because of, uh, because of the Olympics. But her, her white agent did sit with her and her, uh, her escort. And she gave a very nice speech. <sighs> she, she, her speech said yeah, she, she hoped that she would be a good representative of her race or something like that. Uh, near. Question three. On November 11th, several Catholic and Orthodox priests were killed in the capital of Bulgaria, accused of spreading anti-communist sentiment. So what city were they executed in? Oh, my gosh. Essentially, I'm asking what the capital of Bulgaria is. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Uh, I, I don't know this, but I'm locked in. I thought you were Mr. Uh, Mr. Geography Sporkle. Geography, like usually like U.S. Uh, well, North America, South America, Africa. I'm really not good with um with Europe. Uh, what did you come up with, Kels? I I know it's I, I'm hoping it's there, but I'm pretty sure it's not. I said Riga. Okay, Andy, Sophia, and Devo, Sophia. The correct answer is Sophia. Riga is uh, Latvia, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. And the final question of the round. Admiral Luke McNamee died in December of 1952. He twice held the governorship of this U.S. territory, the westernmost territory of the United States. Locked. Locked in. Oh, man. Yeah, I kind of turned the uh, death category into a g- geography ter- uh, question. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Okay. Mm. No, I don't know where that is 100%. So what it was at the time. Locked in. Is everybody locked in? I'm still thinking. Um, This is wrong. I'm totally wrong, but I'm locked in. Locked in. Andy. I wrote Midway. Devo? Well, I went with the year 1952, and I wasn't I wasn't certain where some of our other territories are 
regarding Western most. So I said Hawaii. Well, okay. It would have been a state by counts, wasn't it? No, it was a state in 59. Oh, okay. Um, I said Guam. Oh, Guam's good. Yeah, that's good. It is good. Guam's good. It's really good because it's the right answer. Yeah. I couldn't oh. remember where Guam was. It's in the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. I just didn't know it was farther west than than Hawaii. Man, good answer, Kels. Thank you, sir. Well played. So, at the end of regulation, I've got Devo with 155, Kels with 150, and Andy with 140. Andy, get, wow. These are getting tighter and tighter. <sighs> so, as I know you're all aware, NATO was founded in 1949 by 12 countries. Two more were added in 1952, bringing the total to 14. I need you to name any 10 of those 14 NATO countries. That's the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, in case you were not aware. Not happy about this. I am very happy with this. Kind of happy. Because well, I'm sure you are. This is kind of in your wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I got ten. Um. Sure. I got ten. Man, I'm not. I'm not liking some of this list. I think I'm. I know I'm forgetting somebody. I know definitely I'm forgetting somebody. Um, I'm just guessing region. Yeah, me too. I'm locked in. All right, everybody's locked in? I'm locked in. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's start with Andy. The United States, the UK, France, Canada, Norway, Denmark, Italy, Belgium, Netherlands, Iceland, those are my 10. Also, I believe Portugal, but I can't come up with a 12th one. It's driving me crazy. So there were, there were 12 um, original founding right. members and two that were added in 52, so there's 14 total. Right, but I, I couldn't come up. I don't remember the two that were added in 52, but I, I was trying to remember the, the 12 right. original. Okay, Devo? Uh, the U.S., Canada, the U.K., France, West Germany, Italy, mm. Spain, Finland, Norway, and Denmark. West Germany is one of the 50 from the 52, I'll bet. Yep. Because they weren't part of the original NATO. Yep. Kels? All right. The United States, Canada, France, UK, Spain. Portugal, Norway, Sweden, the Netherlands, and Iceland. Okay, let me total up these uh, answers real quick and see where we're at. You may talk amongst yourselves. You know, I'm a lot more quippy when I don't have anything at stake. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying. All right, this is something I teach, so I'm pretty well versed in it. West Germany is one of the two that came in in '52. I think Spain went with the Warsaw Pact. They didn't go Warsaw Pact. They might have been neutral. Because it was still a fascist regime in 52. Yeah, wasn't the Spanish mm. Civil War around that time? Spanish Civil War was during, was before World War II. Right, but General uh, Felicimo... Uh, what's his last name? Felicimo... I keep wanting to say Tito, but that's Yugoslavia. No, it's not Tito, but he was still in control in 52. Yeah. Jermaine, Jackie, Mark, Michael. <laughs> yeah. Franco. So some, oh, tip my tongue, they started doing the Jacksons. Was Franco? 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 Yeah. Felicimo Franco, yeah. He was still in, he was still in power after uh, World War II? He was definitely still in power after World War II. He stayed in power until like the 70s. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. He died in office. But anyway, yeah. I don't might have come in 52 but i don't think so but uh, west germany i'm sure that's the that's the right answer for one of the two camp countries that came in 52 i can't think of the second one though i totally forgot the low countries completely i have the correct answers here if you'd like to hear them sure yes i'm interested the, the 12 founding countries were belgium canada denmark france iceland italy luxembourg Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, the UK, and the United States. That's the one I couldn't come up with. And the two that were added in 1952 were Greece and Turkey. Oh, man. Wow. So, let's start with third place. I got Andy with 10 out of 10. Jeez. First time I got 10 out of 10, final question. 240 <laughs> points for, for Andy. So Kells missed Spain and Sweden, giving him 80 points and a total of 230. Devo, I see Devo missing three, getting seven right for 70 mm-hmm. points, Yep, giving him a final of 225. And Andy is our winner. Whew. Kells in second place and Devo bringing up the rear. Congratulations, Andy. That was one of our closest well matches. It was a very good game. Unfortunately, that officially eliminates me from contention for the members only jacket in the Brain Masters <sighs> tournament. So it will come down to you too. Whew. Well, you fought admirably, sir. You I did. I tried to fight as hard as I could until the end. So, Neil, could you give us an update on those standings? Yep, we've got Devo with 13, Andy with 16, and Kells has 19. So by my math, the worst Kells can do is 21. The best Andy can do is 22. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm curious, is Devo mathematically still in it for the silver medal? Uh, hypothetically, he's three behind Andy. So he could... He could make that up. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. If you if if Andy loses the last two and Deva wins the last two, then he could. Uh, that would be uh, uh, nineteen to eighteen. Anybody's game. Except anybody's Dave. game. Not really. <laughs> That's our motto. Devo, <laughs> Devo cannot make it to to uh, first place. No, I am eliminated from the jacket, but there's still plenty to play for. Pride is always a thing. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, Quick shout out to all of our patrons. Thank you very, very much for supporting the show. You make all the madness happen. You help us put on this show, maybe some more in the future. We don't know yet. The more support we get, the more shows we can do. So if you want to hear more of us being who we are, throw us those ducats if you can. And from all of us here at the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast, This is Sadly Eliminated Devo with Still In It Andy. So long, ladle brainers. Kells in the catbird seat. I don't hate bad boy. I pity the fool. (laughs) (laughs) And Quizmaster Neil. Here's a quote from the Greenwood, South Carolina Index Journal from 1952. Today's cheerful note, the atomic bomb can't kill you more times than you're already going to die already. Okay. Signing off. (laughs) Uh, Hello, all you good trivia people out there. Uh, If you like what you hear, I have exciting news uh, for you. You can listen to this show on your favorite podcast apps, wherever that might be. Whatever uh, floats your boat. Uh, Got any ideas, you can tweet us at uh, Ladlebrain. If you're into the Facebook kind of thing. Uh, we're at Brain Ladle Productions. Also, YouTube at Brain Ladle Productions. Kind of redundant, but you get the idea. We also have a website, BrainLadleTrivia.com. If you want to get us individually, there's a Neil, there's Kels, there's Davo, and there's even a, an Andy fellow. If you 
feeling generous, uh, also have a Patreon. You know, if you can send us some ducats, it really help out the show. And that also that leads into us helping you. So help us help you, and you be classy out there. Obama out. The preceding podcast was presented by Brain Ladle Productions. All rights reserved.